Hello there, this is John V, Software Evangelist at Jscape, and you're watching a Jscape MFT Server tutorial. Last time, we taught you how to set up trading partners on Jscape MFT Server. In the example, we showed you how to connect to a remote trading partner using that trading partner's SFTP service. However, we only used password authentication. For better security, you will want to use two-factor authentication. This combines password authentication and public key authentication. Since you already used password authentication in that previous video, we'd like to show you now how to configure public key authentication for your SFTP trading partners. For this tutorial, we'll be assuming that 1. Your trading partner already has a running SFTP server with public key authentication enabled. On Jscape MFT server, that's just a matter of selecting public key upon adding the SFTP slash SCP service. Our second assumption is that you also have a running SFTP server as well. If you don't have one yet, you can watch the video setting up an SFTP server. Our third and last assumption is that your trading partner has created a user account on their SFTP server that you can use to log in via public key authentication and upload files with. For the purpose of this tutorial, let's just say that user account is named Company A User. To visualize, let's say your Company A and your trading partner is Company X. This server on the left represents your SFTP server while this server on the right represents your trading partner's SFTP server. Now that we're done with the preliminaries, it's time to get into the meat of this tutorial. Let's start discussing the steps for setting up public key authentication using our SFTP server of choice, Jscape MFT server. Even if you are not using Jscape MFT server, the steps outlined here will still give you a general idea on how public key authentication is set up between other SFTP servers. The general steps, except step 4, which is exclusive to the Jscape MFT server environment, are as follows. 1. Generate a public-private key pair and store the private key on your server. 2. Export the public key. 3. Import the public key into your trading partner's SFTP server. And 4. Set up a trading partner object on your server that will authenticate using this key pair. Let's begin. Step 1. Generating an SFTP public-private key pair. We won't discuss this thoroughly here since we already covered this topic in detail in the video, setting up public key authentication on an SFTP server. We encourage you to watch that video first to at least know how to create key pairs on Jscape MFT server. Remember to keep the private key file in a secret location and of course, don't forget where you placed it. Remember the key file's password as well. Step 2. Exporting the public key file. Once you've generated the key and saved the private key file, the next thing to do would be to export the corresponding public key file. To do that, just select the client key you created earlier, click the export button, and then click public key. You will then be asked to specify the file name and the format. Enter your desired file name or retain whatever was suggested and then select an appropriate format. In our example, we're using the PEM format. However, you can choose the other formats like OpenSSH, SSH, and PuTTY depending on which format is supported by your trading partner's SFTP server. Better inquire first with your trading partner before you do any exporting, otherwise you might encounter problems later. After clicking OK, this will save the public key file on a local directory, usually the downloads folder. You'll need to copy this file to your trading partner's SFTP server. Their server will then use it to authenticate your private key during the login process. It's just a file, so you can email it or transport it via USB stick or any portable storage device. Of course, make sure you do it in a secure manner. Step 3 importing the public key file into the trading partner's server. This step is supposed to be performed by your trading partner's server admin, but we'll just show you how it's done anyway. Just to give you an idea what they'll be doing at their end after you send them that public key file. Besides, you'll also find this step useful if you want to do the reverse. That is, apply public key authentication on their server when they connect to yours. 
B2B data exchanges typically go two ways, so yes, you'll likely need to import their public key file as well. The GUI shown here is still Jscape Empty Server, but note that this would really be carried out at the trading partner site. As soon as your trading partner server admin receives your public key file, he will import that file into their company's SFTP server. This is now the newly imported public key file. The process doesn't end there. Your trading partner's admin would then have to associate that public key file with the user account assigned to you for your trading partner transactions. If you recall, for this particular example, that user account was company A user. That's what you're seeing on the screen now. Now that the public key file import process is complete, it's time to go back to your own server and set up a trading partner object there. Again, let me remind you to watch the video on trading partners if you haven't done so yet to understand the concept of trading partner objects in the context of Jscape Empty Server. We now go to step 4, setting up a trading partner object. Go to your trading partners module and click the add button to add a new trading partner. Since we're using SFTP in this tutorial, select SFTP slash SCP for the trading partner protocol. Enter pertinent information such as the name of the trading partner, the name of the company. We'll just use the same values for both the trading partner name and the company name. The host name or IP address of the trading partner's SFTP server. The username of the account created for you there, that is uh, company A user. The password. If your trading partner's SFTP server is configured to authenticate purely using keys, just leave this blank. However, if it's configured for two-factor authentication, which is what we want, you should enter the appropriate password here. After that, click the client key button. Select the use key file option and browse to the private key file you saved earlier. Enter the key file's password and then click OK. You can then run a test on this trading partner's connection by clicking the test server button. If you see something like the message box shown on the screen, Time to congratulate yourself. You now know how to set up public key authentication.